Hello, Teach 306. I'm Keith, and I am attempting to complete my online reading quest. I'm uh, not really used to recording myself and talking to myself out loud, so we shall see how this goes. So, instead of picking a magazine or a newspaper article or something, I thought I would pick an actual online textbook that I may assign to my students to read and to use in, in their learning. So in my science methods class, we're working on a lesson plan for the water cycle and condensation and evaporation. So I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone and do a little research for that while I am doing some, doing my online reading quest. So it's almost like it's a real thing. I am reading this for information, so let's see how it goes. <clears throat> so the site I chose is CK12. Uh, it's a site I've used before for things. I've used it in one of my other quests for um, the textbook set. It's a real neat site. Um, a quick tour of it. it um, allows you to find free online texts for different subjects, different grade levels. Uh, you can even go into the main page and let's see, let's open that up on here. So I can come here to the main page and you can select different standard sets or different states. Uh, within that it'll filter down to the um, the subject matter and the grade level that you're looking for. Once that's done, it'll actually come up with your search and it will find what books they have on the system. So you can come in here, click on the book. The other thing you can do as a teacher is you can add it to your library. You can see I already have this one added. Uh, you can add it to a, a flex textbook, or sorry, a flex book textbook. I haven't played much with this, but basically what it is, is it allows you to take the textbook and I believe use portions of it to make your own book for your students to read and use. Uh, science methods class, let's see. As you can see up here, I have Amazon Music playing in my headset. It's, um, in case you're wondering, it's classical for focus. Uh, it does allow me, or it does help me, I should say, to kind of block out everything else that's going around uh, around me and, <clears throat> and just concentrate on the task at hand. We'll see how it goes for this. I may end up turning it off. So... Once we have it to our Flexbook textbook, it looks like we can go in here and customize it and remove different textbooks. You can edit it, move it around and such. We're not going to worry too much about that. It's just something I thought I'd point out to you. So if you decide to check the site out later on, you can, you can try that out. I'm just going to close down this this other one. Um, you can see part of the problem that arises too with using online text is um, how quickly I got distracted away from my main task of reading that reading that chapter. Uh, it's really easy to right click and open in different tabs and move around and such. Um, for example here I can see where you can set up a uh, a class or a study group on here um, that really has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now but yet I somehow found myself in it so <clears throat> it can get really easy online even if you're not at a spot with ads and games and such to start clicking around and get off course I think we've all ended up at one point or another during our searching online of spending an hour or two watching uh, YouTube videos 
just hopefully not about cats. I'm kind of tired of cat videos. But so let's close this down and we will go back to <clears throat> the book at hand. So as I said, I, um, I chose this chapter six, Water and Earth for research. So basically, if I were to assign this to my students, uh, they would be reading it for context and they would be reading it to learn information from it. <clears throat> Not necessarily critically, uh, but more to like a textbook to absorb the information, to make notes. Uh, one of the things I like to do when I'm reading online, and I am one of those people that actually enjoy reading online. Um, I can't say I prefer it over uh, reading an actual book, but I like reading online. There's a lot of, a lot of things I can do with the text online that is not as easy to do with it. And we'll talk about that as we go through <clears throat> the quest. So, yeah, we will we'll talk about things you can do online that you can't do so easily on paper. One of the things I will point out first is that when I'm reading online, I really like to have a Word document or a note or something up that um, allows me to make notes about what I'm reading as I go or questions that I want to look up later on. Like, uh, for example, it says here, Water is also found in the clouds that rise above the planet and travel across the sky. Um, I may want to make a note to myself um, how are clouds formed. Uh, if I'm reading this <clears throat> as a prelude to having my students read it, I may actually do this in order to anticipate some of the questions that they may ask me so that I can uh, get a head start and get the information that I need to answer those questions. At the very least, I make notes of the questions that I have and I just further my knowledge. So that's what this up here is for. It's not a distraction. It's not something that's different. Um, it's simply, um, it's, it's there for the purpose of keeping notes of what I'm reading. It's no different than having a, uh, Uh, a, a notebook in front of you while you're reading. <clears throat> in fact, I can probably read these notes better than I can my notebook. As you can see, it's kind of messy. And again, distraction. So, what's on this page that may distract me other than some of the stuff I already talked about. Uh, this little guy up here, I, I got fooled into clicking him earlier. He actually brings you to a site that CK12 has for a summer program for learning and reading. It's a real nice system, it's a real nice um, program, but it really has nothing to do with what we're trying to succeed, achieve, sorry, by reading here. So that's a distraction, especially if you're younger. He's really funny looking. He, he's really toy-like, and I can bet you any money that most kids will go up there and click on that. In fact, I'll click on it in a new tab and sh show you where it, takes, where it takes you. So you can see again, if you get in here, you click on accept the challenge, and you sign up. And now you're in here where you can get to other things and other games. And again, you're off and doing things other than what you're supposed to do. <clears throat> so the text is laid out much like a normal textbook. Um, so you can speak great pictures, uh, write ups, introductions. Here's your chapter outline with the links to everything, all the different things. That's really nice. I really like how you can go from one to the other and move around. You're not flipping through pages. Not that flipping through pages is really tough, but uh, being able to click on the link and take you directly there. Or 
as I'm prone to do, be able to right click and open up different chapters or different sections of the chapter so I can revert back and forth or refer back and forth to different things and uh, set my notes up that way. Uh, the chapter has a great summary on it and that's this page. Um, you can see towards the bottom uh, you're able to change languages. I haven't played much with this. Uh, let's do one that I'm somewhat familiar with so that I don't get lost and not be able to to um, so yeah to be able to get back to English again. So yeah, it actually works really well. I'm, I'm impressed. I hadn't checked it out, but sure enough, the, the languages that they have down here, they have the books translated to that. So that could be a huge, huge bonus for using online reading or online, online reading textbooks, because if you have uh, uh, a Spanish speaking child in your room or student in your room, uh, that doesn't have as strong a grasp on English. They might be new. They might be having troubles with it. They're not left behind. They're not worrying about what they're going to, um, how they're going to learn what they're doing because they can come down and, and click on it. So you may encourage them to use the English to get to to get extra practice and and to to learn how to use the Eng read English and such. But really, your goal is for them to learn, and you don't want that held back by the fact that, they, that they're that they having trouble with English. So, oh. see, I just got distracted by this little, this little button that's hanging down here that I was holding in my hand. I saw the light flashing on it. <clears throat> Yet one more distraction that's that's here. So this is a real good thing about reading online is the uh, the translation capabilities of it. So let's go ahead and set it back to English. You can see they really have a lot of different languages, like Zulu and such. Again, I could get distracted in here because I could be like, um, oh, I wonder how this book looks in Hindi or, or Kazakh or where the heck is where do they speak Malayalam? And so you can see it would it could get really distracting. This is the teacher's version of the software, so I'm not sure. I would have to set up an account or change myself to a student to see what the what the student maybe some of these options aren't available when you're in the student board as opposed to the teacher's board. So that could be one way that you solve some of the problems. So you have your um, navigating buttons up here, uh, earth science, check for middle school, um, read resources, detail, all pretty straightforward. But again, all kind of distractions. So <clears throat> I think the key is, is that if you're going to use online text to read uh, with your students, is you really need to teach them how to read online first, which is probably part of the reason of doing this quest is to realize that. So let's, let's do some reading. So it's chapter six, Water on Earth. It's Earth Science, CK12, Earth Science Concepts for Middle School. Introduction, real nice picture of the, of the uh, Earth, since we're studying Earth Science. How does Earth's water move? When astronauts see Earth from space, this is how it looks. Notice how blue the planet appears. That's because oceans cover much of the Earth's surface. The water in those oceans is in, in constant motion. Water is also found in the clouds that rise above the planets and travel across the sky. The water may precipitate out as rain or snow. Water passes through soil and into groundwater, or it is taken up by leaves of plants and then enters the atmosphere. Water moves into and out of animals. Water may remain as ice in a glacier for thousands of years. 
This chapter is about Earth's most dynamic substance, water. Before I go much further, um, as you can see, I wear glasses and they are bifocals. So sometimes I have trouble reading text and I'll either sit closer to it, which I can't do when I'm recording, or one of the other things I really like about reading online is I know that in on the Mac it's command and the plus sign and it will actually zoom in your text. So that's another thing I like about reading on, online is some of the text sometimes can be really small and it's really easy to zoom it up. It's, it's much like having a magnifying glass with you the whole time. So uh, that is a lot easier for me to read from sitting back here. So <clears throat> hopefully I won't stumble over as many words. So here's the chapter outline as we stated before, distribution of water on earth, states of water, process of the water cycle, uses of water, water distribution, safety of water, conserving water, streams and rivers, ponds and lakes, flooding, glaciers, introduction to groundwater, groundwater aquifers, springs and geysers, groundwater depletion, water pollution, protecting water from pollution, cleaning up groundwater, importance of the oceans, seawater chemistry, ocean zones, wind waves, tides, surface ocean currents, the list goes on and on and on. Um, chapter summary. Summary. Water is found on Earth as a gas, liquid, and solid. Water as a gas is mostly in the atmosphere. Water as a solid is found as ice floating on ponds, as frost in the car, or in glaciers, among other places. Glaciers move by definition, although they do it very slowly. Liquid water moves around the planet through streams, groundwater, lakes, ponds. Most of Earth's liquid water is in the oceans, but it doesn't remain stagnant there. Sea water moves in waves, tides, and currents. Some ocean water changes state and becomes sea ice. Water may evaporate into the atmosphere and become water vapor. Water sets Earth apart from the other planets in the solar system. In fact, water is in all three states is probably exceedingly rare everywhere in the galaxy. Human activities pollute water. Pollutants come from industrial, municipal, and agricultural sources. Water is protected from pollution by acts and rules that guide people to protect water. Water can also be cleaned up once it is polluted. Kind of um, some circular um, referencing there. Water is protected from pollution by rules that guide and protect water. So water is protected by pollution by rules that protect water. It's, um, it's kind of a circular thing, but that aside, so I can click here and go back to the top of the page to navigate. Uh, let's go on to the first section, which is distribution of water on earth. So again, the same levels and such. What you'll notice now, though, is, where did it go? Oh, down at the bottom. So now it will move around with these links. So I'm not really sure how we ended up at, at, with a previous when we just moved from the introduction, but we did. So volcanic landforms. Oh, that's because that's the previous chapter. So, see, I got distracted and moved away. So, okay, so where is Earth's water? So the first thing we'll notice on this page before I read a lot is that we have black text and then we have this light blue text. This light blue text, as you can see all over the page, is links, or our links, sorry. Um, so water, uh, water, ecosystem. So what, what these links will do in, in an online book is they will either direct you below, so they'll move you around on the page, or they'll bring up a definition or other such information on, um, on the word that's highlighted. So if you have uh, some academic language in there that maybe, maybe have to be learned, or if it's a new idea, or if it's a word that they just might not know, 
or it could be a, a topic of the chapter that's really important to um, to know about. So it may bring you to a, a page that has uh, a summary of all the information presented in the chapter for it. Uh, let's take ecosystems here, for example. Uh, if I click on that on that word, it brings me to a page about ecosystems. So here's more information on it. Here's some practice. Uh, if I click in here, it makes a quiz up that I can that I can take to test myself on on the, um, the topic. So now we're going to wait and see. There's the preview. Okay, and then we can start practicing. Yeah, new features. That's nice. Another distraction that pops up. Uh, marine ecosystems include oceans, reefs, tide pools, or all the above. So practice now, see results later. So there's the next button instant feedback. So when you're practicing in here, uh, the student can get instant feedback. Uh, for example, organisms living in the deepest zones of the ocean have adapted their conditions and possess which of the following characteristics? Unhinged jaws, a bioluminescent lure, backward folding teeth, or all of the above. Well, I know that the answer here is all above, but what happens if I pick it's like, oh, I know that they glow in the dark and, and they attract other food by having lures that glow in the dark. So I'll select that one. Oh, it's wrong. It'll tell you. So it'll come up and give you some hints on the idea. Um, uh, so we can come back in here and say next. And <clears throat> the quiz you have to get 10 right in order to move on in the quiz. So it'll mark as one wrong, but it doesn't keep track of the wrong answers, how many wrong you have. So that's really nice too, is um, it's not so important that the student know how many they have wrong, but rather how many they have right in a quiz like this, where you just need to get that many right answers. I don't think we need to remind them as like, yeah, you have two right answers, but you have five wrong so far. They know how they're doing. They don't need the, 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 the reminder all the time. Uh, so this is a real neat feature, but again, it just illustrates that I've now lost total track of where I was reading, when I was reading, and even worse still, the link that I clicked on in the chapter actually brought me to a totally separate area and I've lost my book. So I hope that this brings me back to where I was. Uh, it brings me back to ocean ecosystems, but I was in a chapter. So uh, if, if I think about it, maybe I try, maybe I try using the back button and maybe this will get me back there. And finally, it gets me back there. <clears throat> so that's a big problem with this book, is that the links open up in the same page as opposed to opening up in a separate page. That can, of course, be fixed by right-clicking and selecting open text, open link in a new tab, or open link in a new window. But it's still a distraction and it can still end up getting the student lost and get them into places where they don't necessarily want to be. Uh, so um, let's go on and read some more. Most of the Earth's water is salt water in the oceans. As seen below, only 3% of the Earth's water is fresh. Figure below. Oh, look at that. There's 97% of the ocean, the 3%. Real nice chart shows you so that 3% runs down this waterfall and then they break down that 3% into 90 or 79% ice caps and glaciers, 20% groundwater and 1% accessible surface fresh water. We'll run that fresh water down to the bottom and out of that 50%, sorry, 52% is in lakes, 
38% in soy moisture, uh, one percent is in our bodies and animals, rivers eight percent, and water vapor eight percent. So it gives you a real good um, diagram of of the water cycle. More literature or more literacy, sorry. Um, it, um, it, literacy is more than just words. <clears throat> so. Yeah, I think you're kind of getting the idea, though, of the of the um, text down here towards the bottom. Each unit will have um, it'll have a link. Again, if I click on this, it'll probably take me up. Nope. Now, see, this works properly. It brings up a second page that that is what we wanted to do. So this is a little video here that's available on the distribution of Earth's water, but. Again, we're in a problem now because now we have all of this. And remember I said earlier about being lost and watching cat videos in YouTube. YouTube is really good for information, but it can be really bad because you can really sink into it and get totally lost. So this is going on. Usually you would see ads and such on this page, but I do have an app installed called Adblocker that keeps ads from a lot of ads from popping up so that would be a good thing to use in the classroom because you would either have filters already built into the system to block out certain things or if you have this app loaded it'll take the ads out completely like if i turn in here and i say enable for this site and then i reload the page you can see the difference i hope and maybe not, but you get the idea of what it will do. Yeah, it's the same thing. So, so they can watch this video and then come back and answer these questions. Um, I would like it if it were like our textbook where there was a window where they could type in the answer and then it would email it to me. But this is where this may come in. Maybe you have to, you tell them to have a document open in Word where they can answer it. How much of the Earth's surface is covered with water? Uh, what is most of this water in? Uh, most of the water is in the ocean. Uh, three quarters of it is is um. Is covered in water. See, distractions. But I get distracted like that from reading text, the normal text too. So, uh, so there's questions here available. Here's a quick review. This is another thing I really like about here is the vocabulary. So fresh water, when you click on it down here, it's supposed to bring up Huh. I wonder why that's not working. It's probably has something to do with Chrome. My Chrome is not working right, and sometimes it won't allow pop-ups to occur. So um, normally, let's look at this in um, a different browser here for a second. Let's see, Launchpad, and let's go into Safari. And we'll paste, and we'll go from there. And let's see how this goes. Okay, so we're back to this same page again. There we go. So um, we're actually in Safari is in the background, but we are actually in uh, yeah, in a different browser here. So. You can see with the vocabulary, if you hover over it, it'll come up with a definition of the words. Um, you can also in here change it. Some of them you can change to different languages. This one is only available in English. And then you move on to the next chapter and the next section. Um, 
There's a practice tab here as well. So <clears throat> that's about it in a nutshell. Um, I think that online reading is a good thing if it's taught, if, if a student is taught how to do the text or how to do the reading and not just sat down in front of the computer and say, read this book. <clears throat> uh, we do have to be watchful of distractions. Um, we have to teach them how to stay on task because it's really easy to get bored and come down to my finder and bring up my card game or whatever else I have. Same as in the browser, you can always open up another window, which I see a lot in, in the schools when I'm observing, they'll have this open as a boss screen or a teacher screen so they can bring it up if the teacher's coming around but then they have their game over here running or their facebook running over here so uh, we have to be really aware of that um, so yeah this is my review my thinking out loud about um, online reading and how i would use online reading in my classroom um, I'm Keith, and if you have any questions, drop me a line or see me in class. Bye.